start with a, a few definitions for those who may uh, be <laughs> new to this debate. Uh, what are GMOs and how common are they in our foods? What are GMOs? Um, GMOs are genetically modified organisms, genetically engineered crops is generally what we're referring to with GMOs. Um, they've been around about 20 years now. Um, they're in corn, soy, sugar beets, cotton, canola, you know, many of the main ingredients in, you know, packaged foods that you buy in the grocery store. Um, most of the foods that you're going to buy in the grocery store have genetically engineered uh, ingredients and, within them. And what are the, the current U.S. laws on GMOs, uh, where they can be used, and what we know about them? Well, um, they're, they're pretty widespread. Uh, there are three agencies that regulate uh, GMOs or look at GMOs, the EPA, the USDA, and the FDA. Um, a lot of the critics of GMOs say that the regulatory bodies are, are definitely not thorough enough. They uh, consider these crops to be pretty much uh, similar to any other type of crop. And they, they, in fact, are considered deregulated. So they, they are not regulated. They are deregulated when they are in the marketplace. And there were some state efforts to uh, change state laws to have uh, more regulation over GMOs. Uh, where did that happen, and uh, what happened with those efforts? Well, yeah, a lot of people over the last several years have come to have a lot of concerns about GMOs, genetically modified organisms, different, different crops, for, for a number of reasons. Um, and they have tried different strategies to rein in production and uh, planting of the crops. But the latest sort of effort has really been this labeling effort. And you've seen that in many states around the country. Um, there was a ballot initiative in California that failed. There was a ballot initiative in Washington State. This past November, you had ballot initiatives in uh, Colorado and Oregon. The Oregon ballot initiative is actually under a recount right now. Um, because the vote was so narrow, so narrow. And um, in Vermont, of course, they did pass really the nation's first mandatory GMO labeling law earlier this year. Um, but Vermont has been sued now, um, of course, and so the future of that law is in, in limbo right now. And why go the, the labeling route? What's the strategy here? Well, uh, there very much has been a consumer sort of backlash against GMOs. Um, and and it, it, it's a strategy to, uh, to fight back against um, the biotech companies and the crops that they are developing. There are a number of concerns about the crops, as I've said, um, environmental concerns, some safety concerns. Uh, the biotech crop companies say that their products are, are very safe, that they're proven safe, um, that they're well regulated, but there are what seems to be a growing number of people that just don't trust the companies and don't believe that and they want the right to know they say what is in their food and they want it to be very clearly labeled when they're buying it at the grocery store. And how does uh, U.S. labeling laws or lack thereof compare uh, to other countries around the world? Well there are some 60 countries, um, you know, Australia, Australia, France, Russia, China, there are many countries that do require some form of mandatory labeling. Um, for foods that contain genetically engineered ingredients. Um, the FDA, which regulates food labeling here in the United States, has never deemed that necessary for foods that contain genetically engineered crops. Um, they're considered generally recognized as safe. They're considered not to be any different than, you know, the other types of corn or soy that go into our food.